we were the first ones to really systematically search for them. It started in 1999 and it's continued through till today. We walk around and look down on the ground. And uh, you do this in the spring when they're just coming out of hibernation. So the about a six week window of opportunity to look for the snakes in mid-March through April every year. And so we take advantage of that and try to get in uh, as many hours as we can. This is one of the longest term studies on uh, North American viper and particularly of this species. Uh, the eastern Massasauga is fairly wide ranging in the United States. It, it ranges all the way from New York uh, to Illinois uh, to the west. Uh, our population's at the southern range limit, but the populations extend all the way into Canada. Uh, it started out uh, where we were just wanted to know the population ecology, the species, where they're located, um, how many numbers there are, you know, what are sex ratios, you know, what is age structure within a population. But over the course of the study, it's really burgeoned into something much, much larger. Hopefully, you know, all the information that we have can be used towards management and conservation of this critically endangered species in Illinois. Some of the recent expansion that we've done in the project is looking at wildlife health and, and wildlife disease. So the biologists have been following the Massasauga at this population for 15 years and it became clear about five or six years ago that some of the snakes had disfiguration um, or lesions on the face. That we started to see more and more of these snakes and then all of the snakes that had it um, died, that this was becoming a primary problem. And since that point in the last five or six years, we've made ter tremendous advances in identifying the pathogen that we're, we're dealing with and then characterizing the epidemiology of the fungus. It first starts with just little skin lesions that are either on the face or on the back that look like pustules or scabs. Um, and those quickly develop into disfiguring um, swellings and masses that are either on the head or on the back. These lesions typically in our Massasauga stay in the skin, but they can go on the skin of the head, on the neck, or on the body. And now we're, getting, we're seeing, even seeing lesions that are in multiple places, including the tail and the cloaca. As we've, we've gone along, we've identified it as Ophidiomyces, which is a fatal fungus that's not just affecting our Carlisle Massasaugas, but affecting snakes in the eastern United States. So first what we did was we grew the fungus on complex carbon sources, such as whole insects, fish, and as well as mushrooms, to see which ones that they could grow on in nature. We also look at uh, the matrix potential of the soils. So we look to see which range it can grow, and that will help predict where it can grow in the environment. Obviously it can grow on just about anything, so snakes are not its only host. So the grant we received from the Wildlife Preservation Fund allowed us to create a new diagnostic test that's more sensitive um, at detecting the fungus so we can detect smaller quantities and with samples that don't have to be invasive. Previously, we would have to anesthetize that snake, take a biopsy of the affected lesion. So the, the QPCR, the test, allows us to, to take swabs, which are non-invasive, in the field and be able to get um, positive results or negative results that are that we can rely on in order to make management decisions. Um, all of the infections for the most part re result in mortality rates of greater than 50 percent and in Massasaugas it's 100 percent thus far and that we're trying new treatment and new therapies by altering temperature or using antifungal medications that will help us to hopefully improve our success of treating these animals in captivity and then the next plan is is obviously to translate that into free-ranging populations. The cause of why this started to emerge five or six years ago across the eastern United States, we still don't know. That's one of the biggest questions that we all have is, why did this start causing a problem now and how do we stop it in the wild?